A few years ago, I noticed a company in St. George, Utah, moving monster amounts of orange dirt for an airport runway reconstruction project. The company was JP Excavating, and the project was a $26 million effort to rebuild St. George Airport's 9,300-foot runway. But why? Because of this stuff, blue clay. The problem was blue clay caused the... Um, the runway to ripple. Blue clay is predominantly found in Utah's southern region. It's composed of smaller bentonite soils deposited by prehistoric rivers and lakes derived from volcanic ash. And that's what today's video is about. And I know, I know, it doesn't sound thrilling, but bear with me. The airport nicknamed SGU opened in 2011. But shortly after the brand new airport began operating, management noticed an issue, swelling on the runway with some areas swelling as much as one foot. This is an issue anywhere, but a major issue with aircraft. Although precautions were taken when the runway was originally built, when water and heat was added, it quickly absorbed and expanded, resulting in movement. What, w what they didn't realize was that as that water would come off, it would actually go down and then the hot asphalt acted like a moisture sink and pulls moisture underneath the asphalt once it's underneath the asphalt, it has no place to go. Back to the blue clay. This stuff is super expansive. Traditional soil allows water to drain through it, but clay's tiny flat particles make for a lot of water absorption. This causes swelling, which means the earth literally grows. As the water ran off the runway into the drainage ditches, it percolated below the runway, swelling the clay underneath and pushing it up in odd and potentially hazardous ways. And you can think of it like a sponge. When it's dry, it's small. When you add water, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. JP Excavating then began a massive excavation effort in 2019 to remedy the issue. Runway construction crews are now digging 17 feet below the surface, taking out the bad soils and replacing them with the good. So as you can see, they've gone down 17 feet. There, the, the optimally moisturized clay that they'll use for the first five feet to act as a plug. And then over here, you can see they're bringing in native material that will actually come up another 12 feet and then once that is done, then they'll put in natural uh, material comes up the last foot, foot and a half, 18 inches. During a 129 day closure when tourism dropped, JP crews moved nearly two and a half million yards of material over excavating about 5,400 feet of the runway by 17 feet deep. Then to build the new cross section, they conditioned the blue clay, meaning they intentionally added water to it to cause it to swell. Using modern day GPS technology and specialized equipment for testing, the moisture content of the soils are measured throughout the entire project. The clay must be returned at an accurate 24% moisture level. Uh, hundreds of tests are taken each day to the point of there's about a, a material test taken about every six minutes on this project in a 24-hour duration. There is a lot of testing that occurs to make sure that the project is built to the specifications. Crews then quickly place this material at the bottom in a five-foot lift to form a watertight barrier to block water from penetrating the clay further down. And then the second we put the clay on it, because we cannot have it dry out. If it dries out and cracks, then we have to start over again. And with this kind of temperatures, we cap it. We're literally capping it within two hours after we put it down. And then we move on to the next section. So it's kind of a being built in layers all the way through. And why explain all of this? Well, today we're back with JP excavating at another large earthwork project adjacent to the St. George Airport, where they're performing similar work. Although similar, the earth around here can change dramatically in only 100 yards thanks to the Intermountain Fault System, which St. George squarely sits atop. So with the fun backstory out of the way, let's get out to site. We're staying in Las Vegas right now for Trimble Dimensions, but we had a spare morning. So I called JP Excavating up here in St. George and asked if they had any earth moving for us to check out. And they said they did and we could come by. So we drove a few hours up from Vegas 
to St. George where it is very cold, it's just about freezing, to check out some earth moving by the airport. So let's get it. Right, before we get moving, moving dirt, we need to fuel and grease everything. A lot of people ask, how do you get these machines fueled up every day? With one of these trucks typically, so this truck will drive to each job site either in the morning like now or in the afternoon once the work is done. And you'll have a fueler come around, fuel each machine individually, grease each machine individually, so they're taken care of. These trucks have everything in the back of the truck. There's a 2,000 gallon diesel fuel tank up front. And then we have all of our different uh, hoses for fueling, for greasing, for different fluids, whatever we need to maintain each piece of equipment. Scraper's coming in. Right over there is St. George Airport. Uh, uh, it's cold. Over there is St. George Airport. Here next to St. George Airport is a major development that JP Excavating is building. So here there will eventually be nine giant warehouses for Amazon, Walmart, whoever needs to store stuff in a giant box. So they are building nine enormous building pads along with the surrounding road infrastructure to get trucks in and out of this area. We have Caterpillar articulated trucks pulling two different types of scrapers. We have Mobile Track Solution scrapers, two of those, and a KTEC scraper. They are loading themselves or capable of loading themselves. But we also have a wheel dozer in the cut. Those are pretty cool. They're not so common east in the eastern U.S., but out in the western U.S., they are quite common. They're very handy in a situation like this because they can keep that cut nice and smooth to keep those scrapers going in and out very efficiently, but also get around the job site very quickly with those rubber tires. He also has, if you look closely, Trimble GPS on that blade so he can know exactly where these scrapers need to cut and over the radio say, hey, over here is good. We need a little bit more over there, so on and so forth without the need for a grade checker or any stakes in that cut. The scrapers are over excavating the native blue clay. This is the processed blue clay right here. They call it marinated. To condition the volume of clay needed for this project, like the pile behind me, JP uses larger excavators with makeshift streams running to them to mix in the water. They first tried other traditional methods like tractors and discs, but the excavators have proven far more effective. Here we have a little bit of moisture conditioning going on. We just had the water truck come in here and wet all of this down. 
Now we've got the little dozer mixing it all up to get that water into that material, expand that clay so that it's suitable for placement elsewhere. It's also worth noting, you astute observers have probably noticed the custom paint on a lot of the equipment. JP has been painting their equipment over the past year to celebrate their 30th anniversary. That dark, dark gray with the red accents. And I think it's probably the coolest paint job I've ever seen. David Goggins over there has probably been up since two in the morning and ran 15 miles. I'm freezing my ass off. Well, everybody, it's Groundhog's Day again for David Goggins. I feel like my nipples are chafing because it's so cold. It hurts. We're now driving to the fill area. It's a 5,800 foot haul. They're hauling all the way over here to get rid of some of this additional blue clay that they don't need underneath the building pads. And the round trip right now is about six minutes per cycle for each scraper, which makes it about six to 7,000 yards with the three scrapers every day. This is the other side, the fill where the scrapers are hauling to. They're taking that blue clay from the cut. They are putting it over here to get rid of some of the additional material. This is not going to be a building pad so they can dump it here without having any issues in the future. And they are absolutely flying. We have this box blade going back and forth to make sure this area is nice and smooth so that they can go through here and dump nearly at full speed, turn around and then tear back again to the cut. Uh, it's absolutely cool. Did I just say absolutely cool? It's cold. We also have a water cart here, um, mixing some material into this to help condition the material. We also have a water cart out here mixing water into the material to help with the conditioning. And we have a tractor and disc set up to mix that water and material together to get that expansion necessary to get... I can't talk today, I'm done, we're done. Thank you to JP Excavating for having us out. If you liked this video, please be sure to subscribe and you can support us by shopping stickers, hats, shirts, calendars at dirtworldstore.com. We'll see you on the next one. Stay dirty.